Yes, hi, this is the uh, Bell Manage and Bell Power System Architectures. Um, everything you see in the dashed line uh, blue box uh, can be run on-prem, uh, on-premise by our customers, can be hosted by our customers on their cloud, or can be hosted by Bellarc. Uh, we use AWS. Um, the clients, uh, there's two options. Uh, you can run the installable client and you can run the um, what we call the walk around or uninstallable client. Um, and most of our customers uh, do run the installable client, uh, particularly if they have assets in many different locations uh, uh, around the world even, and if they have uh, work from home machines. Um, so it is a very unobtrusive uh, agent. Um, it's basically uh, dormant all day. The default is that at 4 a.m., uh, and you control this so at the default time at 4 a.m. Uh, it runs about a 10, 15 second scan of the host machine, uh, creates a very small file, less than uh, 50 kilobytes, sends that file back to um, our customer's uh, Bell Manage web server. Bell Manage server creates uh, entries in the backend uh, SQL Server database and also web based reports. Um, the client obviously runs on um, desktops. Uh, uh, laptops, uh, tablets, uh, servers, virtual machines, uh, operating systems include Windows, um, all Macs, uh, 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 Linux, uh, all Linux, and Solaris, um, x86 only. And then um, this is then again uh, updated uh, automatically. Um, uh, entries are created in the database and then uh, we also have uh, the ability to pull uh, that data into our Power BI reports called Bell Power um, that are then uh, published on your Power BI service. And we'll show you how uh, that works. And that's also automatically updated. And from the Power BI service, you can then share those reports, um, subscribe to reports that alerts uh, for other people in your organization. So these are the... Um, Bell Power reports uh, with the Bell Manage uh, data discovery uh, automatically updated uh, based on the schedule that you set. You can see here that this is running on Azure. Our instance of Azure, naturally, uh, for our customers, it would be running on their instance of Azure. And uh, you can see the kind of features that you have uh, within uh, Power BI service. Uh, you can easily share these reports with others uh, within your organization, just enter a name or an email address. Um, you can subscribe um, uh, yourself or others to uh, these reports, and uh, you can set up a frequency daily, weekly, monthly, would not suggest hourly. Uh, and then you can set alerts um, on any of these uh, uh, visuals that they call it. And basically, uh, uh, based on the calendar, you can change it as greater than, less than, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of flexibility uh, with these reports. And again, uh, the navigation is very intuitive. Um, you can say, um, actually, let me clear those filters. You can say, uh, geez, show me all my, uh, my Windows machines. And these are my various Windows operating systems. I've got some old Windows 7. I can then drill through to those and then see a detailed list of those Windows 7 machines. Um, I can. Um, won't go through all of these reports. There's a couple of um, videos that will go through more detail for software asset management and for cybersecurity. But just to show you a little bit, um, some of the interesting ones here, uh, this is one we uh, created on software savings. And then you can see here that if I put in 180 days of uh, six months software that has not been used for six months that requires a license, it's automatically filtered through here based on the uh, some uh, example unit prices that we uh, found on the web, actually. But you can very quickly see where you should be paying attention to. I've got a bunch of Visual Studio here that um, hasn't been used. And if I want to drill through further on those particular Visual Studios, I can just uh, drill through just like this. This shows me uh, the products, uh, the versions, uh, the users and the computers that have not used um, those instances of Visual Studio for uh, six months. Um, let's see, I've also got reports here on security updates that are needed. And you can see that these are categorized by severity. So critical end of life are probably the ones you want to focus on. 
If I want to say, show me my Microsoft critical updates that are needed, bingo, I can just drill through and see the list of critical updates that are needed. I can actually click on these queue numbers and get details uh, from the vendor uh, about what those particular patches are, are about. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, patches that have not been applied to these machines uh, based on the criticality. Uh, so there's no false positives in, in, in any of these cases. Uh, USB storage devices just allow me to track USBs um, uh, by serial number, and then I can actually approve those uh, serial numbers or not, and can be alerted if a serial number that's not on the approved list has been actually used, uh, which can be a big security threat. Someone bringing a USB from home, for example. Um, this report shows me where uh, I'm getting my Microsoft updates. Um, this shows me uh, what the status is of uh, my drive encryption. And you can see here, we're also picking up the BitLocker encryption, but I can say, gee, show me all the ones that have suspended encryption, for example. And these are machines uh, that have hardware encryption, but they've actually suspended it. So it might be something you want to track. Antivirus, uh, again, picks up the definition state and whether real-time file scanning is turned on or not. Uh, user accounts is interesting. We're picking up both uh, uh, domain users and uh, equally importantly, local account users and uh, their uh, privileges. So if I want to say, gee, show me all the local accounts that have admin rights, I can just drill through, bingo, these are the local accounts that have admin rights. It might be something that I want to want to track to make sure that you want those uh, and it's still enabled. Uh, I can, of course, oops, let me clear the filters. I can, of course, say, gee, show me all the machines that have passwords older than 90 days and quite a few in here. And this one is interesting. These show you the number of machines that a particular user has logged into. And I might want to track and say, geez, this 74 user has logged into almost 200 machines. Let me take a look. And of course, you can set alerts on any of these. If users go over a certain number, you may want to, to actually track that. Um, Oracle Java is a licensing report. Um, that's based on Java, and obviously we can we can track those based on what's free and what's paid. And you certainly want to track uh, the paid ones because those are the ones that Oracle's uh, new rules uh, require you to license all of your employees, not just the ones that are actually uh, using Java uh, within your organization. So it's very important to track those uh, those licenses. The Microsoft Server report actually shows you the. Uh, server uh, licensing requirements. Here we have the core licenses, uh, uh, client access licenses, uh, server licenses, et cetera, um, based on the uh, licensing rules and metrics. And then, of course, you can drill through here and say, gee, show me all those machines that have core licenses and uh, what the details are. We don't have all the details on this page. Um, and then, of course, there's a uh, ongoing status report um, where you can get the you know status of when the machines uh, your machines updated last uh, the profile age this is a demo so these are pretty old but typically this will be you know less than 60 days or however you set it you that's under your control how long you want to keep the machines in the system if they have not reported and the the refresh date so lots of powerful information here can be shared easily uh, and automatically updated uh, within uh, your uh, Power BI uh, environment. Thank you.